and we are live. Welcome to Homemaking with Purpose, where we bring to you the best ideas, interviews, and information for today's homemakers. I am Denise Jordan, your host, and on tonight's show, we will welcome Kimmy from She's in Her Apron. She's going to share her homemaking journey, tell us just a little bit about some of her homemaking challenges, a little bit about prepping, and about her new She's in Her Apron planner. Before I bring Kimmy on, let me just say that this video is brought to you by Apron Diva, our online apron boutique. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. And tonight's featured apron, once again, is the Mommy and Me set this one right here. And look at this sweet little mom and her family, her two girls. And this is one of our best selling products. And it's offered in a set of two. You can see the little girl here is five. She's wearing the child's version. And then the mom and the teen daughter is wearing the adult version. So if you want to pick up one of those, we have a discount code for you this week. And it goes until next week's show and it's 10% off and you use the discount code MOMMY10. Okay, let's get into it. Hello, homemakers and everyone in the chat. I am so glad you could join us tonight. I am just so glad that all of you are here. And I tell you what. I am so excited that Kimmy from She's in Her Apron is joining us. So let's give Kimmy a warm welcome to the platform. Hello, Kimmy. Hello, Denise. I'm I so happy glad to be you were here. able to join us tonight. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Excited for the invite. Thank you. You are quite welcome. So viewers, if you have questions, put them in the chat box and put four question marks in front of the question and four at the end of the question. And then Mickey Blue Skies can help me capture them. Because you know, sometimes I get to chatting away and I'll miss the question. So she'll so often send it to me either on my iPad, which I've got right here, or on my um, phone. So if you hear a little bing or something, she's either sending me a note or she's yelling at me about something. So, all right. So I got the iPad set. All right. So let's get into the Q&A. So Kimmy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like how long you've been married? How'd you guys meet? That kind of thing. All right. So um, I am Kimmy Hughes from She's in Her Apron. Uh, I have been married for 23 years. <laughs> 23 okay. years. Um and I met Derek in Massachusetts. That's where I'm from. When I was 18 years old, he was serving a mission for our church, oh. actually in our congregation. And so I got to know of him and met back up with him in Utah and became instant best friends when he came home. And yeah, rest is history. I got married when I was 20 and we have four children. Our oldest is Callie, who is 21 and married. She's been married for a year and a half now. And then we have a 17-year-old son who's graduating high school in the spring and a 14-year-old son and a 10-year-old little girl. I think you put a little bit on your YouTube channel about the wedding because I yes, saw a little, a little bit of that. Yes, it was it was bittersweet and hard. You know, COVID interrupted a lot of things and, you know, everyone's lives. And, and it did with us with her wedding. Uh -huh. um, and so we ended up having a drive in type style wedding, like when you go to the drive in theater. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So we each area county in Utah had different restrictions and they were getting married in Salt Lake County and they had higher restrictions than Utah County. So we could only have like a group of 10, but the night before her wedding, they lifted. So we could have more people outside of the car um, with her during the pictures at the end. But everyone, you know, we found this beautiful property and we brought an arch. It was gorgeous. And we had all the cars lined up and speakers and they could hear everything from the car. But a lot of people mm -hmm. sat outside the car, you know, and it was beautiful. And um, 
beautiful wedding. And then we ended up having a little reception in the summer and to, you know, have those kids have closure with the cake and dancing with mom and dad. And so it was beautiful. Yep. Okay. Well, it sounds like it really was. And from the pictures that I saw, it, it was really nice. So I was glad to be able to uh, just see just a little bit. Just yeah, we shared just a little. For all the viewers that have been with us since the beginning, I started my channel nine years ago. And so we shared a little. It was special. Okay. All right. And so I am going to ask you then, have you always been a stay at home, like wife and mom? Like when you first got married, did you work outside the home or did you stay at home as a housewife right away? I worked outside the home when we were married. And then when I, when I got pregnant, I still worked. Mm -hmm. And then after my pregnancy, I was able to do a few things for my job at home. And then, um, yeah, I did work. I worked at the mall. In fact, I was working at the mall right before we got the call that our son, um, our second oldest is adopted. And so when I got the word that, you know, that was all happening, I quit and was a stay at home mom. I gone back to work a few times here or there just for a little bit, but it was just too hard. And we just decided for me to stay home and work with that budget and make it work. Um, and so I've been home and then started She's in Her Apron back in 2012 and a hobby turned into great opportunity. Okay. Let me just share that. Since you said you started She's in Her Apron, let me just share yeah. your channel um, right here. So here's your channel right mm -hmm. here. She's in Her Apron. And I love your pop where you are, progress mm -hmm. over perfection. I yeah. just really like that. The other thing I really like too is how you always say, okay, aprons on. And then you kind of like get busy, get down to business, that kind of thing. I always think yeah. that is so fun. Oh, thanks. You know, I got that idea of aprons on from a viewer. His name is Aaron and he loves to cook with his mom and he's always DMing me great things to say. And that one just stuck. And so I give credit to Aaron. So thank you, Aaron. Well, I really like it. And you know, sometimes when I'm responding to um, people who've placed an order for an apron, I'll put a little note and I'll say, you know, your apron is like your cape, you know, with kind of really your superpowers. And when you put it on, it means business. So yeah. And Fly Lady Cat says that sometimes too. And she's yeah. on, by the way. Oh, is she here? Yay. Yeah. She didn't go to bed. She was like, I go to bed early. I'm like, girl, come on, stay up and party with Denise and I. Yes, so she's here. She is here. <laughs> okay, so tell us real quick about your decision to homeschool. Oh, okay. So we uh, started homeschooling our youngest daughter um, last year at the beginning of the school season. We had our, we were planted the seed to homeschool years and years and years before, but that's too much of a challenge with a lot of kids. And I, that's hard. Like I was intimidated by the whole process, but we decided to do it when we noticed really how far she was behind when the lockdowns happened and she was doing school from home and doing the distance learning. We could really see the challenges. I had red flags for years with her mm -hmm. and brought it up to the school and to the principal and they just reassured me, oh no, she's fine. She'll get it. La la la. But I'm like, red flag, red flag. So Mom we decided, always knows. Yes. Yes. It's so true. So we, I, we, we're saying prayers and just praying like, should we do it? And then they had her come home um, during the first few weeks of school saying that, you know, she was might have been exposed and she had to quarantine for 14 days. Mm -hmm. And then just seeing again the distance learning. I'm like, I think we got an answer to our prayers. And mm -hmm. we decided to just homeschool her and work with her. And she has blossomed like unbelievably blossomed to a school. So she's doing fantastic. Um, so we did it for fourth grade this year, fifth grade, and we'll see. We'll see where we head for next year, but she's doing awesome. So if we were to have her go back to school, I feel really good in where she's at. Um, okay. So, But we'll see. But we're loving it. So, yeah. All right. All right. So what are your biggest homemaking challenges? You just shared with us that you have four children. Right now, three are still at home, some younger and some older. But what are your biggest homemaking challenges? Well, I try not to wrap homemaking with being a mom, but that's really hard because not everyone's a mom who's a homemaker. Mm -hmm. um, so one of them is just balancing everybody's schedule 
and making it work and having dinner and trying to get everybody together at the table. And so I think that can count for anybody, you know, husband or wife, even if you don't have children, finding that schedule in time, especially when you're, you know, um, working. Yeah. So my biggest thing is just finding that time where we could actually be together and eat and not all over the board and mm -hmm. eating. So that's to me, that's one of my biggest, but I have lots. I have, and I talk about it openly on my channel. I have ADHD and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So anything could be hard or overwhelming for me if I want it to. And, and that's all here. And I've learned that. So. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, and we just saw your YouTube channel and your YouTube channel is doing very well. I want my channel to be that good when it grows up. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, no. you're doing well. But, it's baby um, steps. <laughs> yeah, and, and it is baby steps. And you know what? Like Sean Cannell says, don't despise small beginnings. I am not at all upset about where I'm at because oh, I'm yeah. doing quite well. And there's a lot of people that would like to be where I'm at, you know, mm -hmm. it's like run your own race and do your own journey. Exactly. I ain't mad at you about where you are. Want to be there, but you know, I ain't mad at you that you're there now. Yeah. It took nine years to get where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, exactly. I'm, a, I'm a turtle. I'm a turtle. You're an overnight success in nine years. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So tell me, so what inspired you to start your YouTube channel? Um, well, I loved editing and filming. In high school, I took an AV class. So I learned how camera works. I learned about cinematography. I learned about editing. Uh, I helped put together the video yearbook that we had for our class. Um, we, we had to interview people and edit that, make commercials. Mm -hmm. And so I fell in love with it. So I decided to go to school um, for that, either wedding videography or work in a production studio somewhere. That's what I wanted to do. And so when we got married that, you know, was put on the shelf, we'll come back to it. So when I discovered there was this whole different side of YouTube, I thought, oh, this would be so fun to dabble in it again and maybe make some videos for the family. And then I started, you know, doing those for our private family blog. And then I was like, I'm inspired by Cass from Clutterbug, right? But back then she wasn't Clutterbug. She was Melto 79. So I, just her inspiration and what I was going through, I wanted to share with other women and cause I don't do it perfect. And, um, I wanted to share how I'm learning things and maybe it will help somebody out. And so that it motivated me to push through, you know, my ADHD and, and mm -hmm. things and really just motivate me and it, it's paid off. Okay. I, I think it's really, um, just really great that you were able to use some things that you learned in high school and then was able to take that and then get more information associated with that. And then here you are, a YouTubepreneur. And, um, you know, back when you graduated high school, being a YouTuber wasn't like really a thing, but now it's a business and you are a YouTubepreneur. So thank yeah. you. We're getting a couple questions in already about the planner. And I hadn't meant to talk about the planner just yet, but yeah. <laughs> since the questions are um, coming in. I guess we better get to them. And <laughs> Give them what they want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I got to figure out, let's see. She sent them to me here. So, what the first one was, what are you canning the most to build your preps? Oh, for prepping. Okay. What am I canning the most? All right. Right now, I haven't canned anything this season or last season. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to. I just haven't had the time to do it. It, It's hard to do it by yourself mm -hmm. if you've ever canned. It's, it takes a lot of work. Um, I would love to. But right now I'm not canning anything, but I usually do jellies when I do, um, and pears and peaches. That's what I do. I do jams and jellies, fruit, yep. you know, something that I can do water bath canning with, but yes. you also freeze those. Is that not correct? Yes, you could freeze those. Absolutely. You just cut them up, um, layer them on a cookie sheet with parchment paper, stick that cookie sheet in the freezer, let it freeze for like an hour or whatever. Mm -hmm more and then just put them in your baggies or a container or in your food saver bags and just put them in there and throw them in your freezer easy way easy way to do it 
And I watched one of your videos last year where you were freezing corn. You had gotten a good deal of yes. corn in this market. Yes. So whereas and you're not canning, you are freezing. Yes. And that paid off. That worked really well. So you just take oh, it out that. in the morning when you know you're going to use it. And then it peels off good. And um, you have great corn. So, yep, that worked really well. Okay. Another question uh, is, uh, when will Kimmy's planner for 2022 go on sale? Those were at the end of the show, but looks like we're doing them now. The biggest question. Okay. So from our calendar here, what, what it is, was I actually wanted to release it next week, but we have a hiccup with my husband was building our website and we decided to have someone professionally do it because we have to really link up that store with our manufacturer on the back end. And the who is building our website, they're doing so good with the graphics. So this, we told them that we wanted it done by the 28th and they're planning to give it to us before the 28th. So I tend to believe whatever that word is. We are planning to hopefully launch on the 28th of October. If not, November 1st, we're, we're launching. So we're just linking now with our website to the manufacturer. So, okay. So sounds <laughs> like pretty soon. So hopefully yes. by the end couple of, of weeks, a couple of weeks. So hang on a couple of weeks, your planners will be launching. Okay. And then there was another question and it's, this is from the Dollar Tree mommy. And it says, hi, Kimmy, what are your son's plans this upcoming year after graduation? My twins had graduated from our home state, from our homeschool last year. One's in college and the other one is working full time and engaged. Oh, congratulations. That's wonderful. Yeah, he he's not sure he does. He does want to go to school, but he also wants to work. So he might just take some time before he goes to school, before he fully decides that and work. He really is wanting to get his savings going. Mm -hmm. And so, but he has some plans and they're exciting. Um, we'll see what he picks, but, um, you know, we'll see where lacrosse takes him and yeah, but, uh, he's kind of focusing right now, maybe just working and building okay. up his savings before he goes to school. Well, you know, some kids do like to take a gap year before they you go. Know, and honestly, I highly recommend it. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Work, build that savings. Know for sure what you want to go to school for. I mean, it's his money that's paying for college. Mm -hmm. You know, we help a little, but we encourage our kids to save for college. Mm -hmm. And because it actually just drives them better to do better in school. It's their money. They Definitely. really see the value in it. So, yeah. But either way, we're so excited for him. He's. He's a go-getter, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah. I heard another beep, so did I get another? Well, I don't see it, so if I missed it, she'll let me know. All right. So um, what are your favorite kinds of videos to make? Ooh, okay. Man, I think it depends on the time of year, because right now is the holidays, and I love creating holiday content for everybody, because I love watching other people's holiday content. Like um, Jen, well, she is now something wonder, but she was pretty neat li living, and then she yes. was something oh, Jen does it? No, so, wait, no, pretty neat living. That's it, I think. Yeah, That's Jen it. Ross, and then... But I can't remember what her channel name was. Maybe someone in the comments can remember. Um, but she still has all her holiday content from years and years and years ago, like her Thanksgiving content. And that motivates me so much. So my favorite content is holiday content mm -hmm. and sharing how I get ready, what we do, our traditions, motivate everyone. Um, I love the holidays. I really do. So this is my time of year. I just love it. We got a little note here. Someone says they cannot wait to be just like you. So that's pretty good. Taylor. Um, <laughs> here's some mind over mind your matters. What is your favorite mom break to take? I feel like it's hard to come up with some me time. And I tell you what, I struggle the same way. And there's no one here but me and the hubby. But sometimes I still mm -hmm. struggle with finding me time. Yes, I was actually encouraged years and years ago to have me time. Um, I felt really guilty about it mm -hmm. because, you know, we put a lot on our plate. Some of us are moms. We have that on our plate work. Um, but I was actually instructed by my therapist to take the time for mm -hmm. me. Um, and so my favorite breaks are honestly <laughs> like going for a drive and getting my favorite treat or going with Freaking friends. off the Dairy Queen. Oh, uh, you love Dairy Queen? <laughs> 
Um, I honestly, a lot of, a lot of the times I get away also is I do get nails. That's like mm -hmm. my big woohoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just that time at the salon and just fading away, I definitely enjoy. And I've enjoyed since the kids were little. Um, um, I do go out at night. I'm a night owl. So some mm -hmm. of the time, and that's where I feel less guilty. The kids are home with Derek can put them to bed. Uh, Chili stays open late, ladies, just so you know. So even on the weeknights, so grab a couple of friends, go get some chips and salsa and put yeah. some ranch dressing with that salsa. It's so good. And we'll sit and eat chips and salsa and just talk. And then when they're cleaning up, we head home. <laughs> so a lot of the time, my me time is at night. Okay. So I mean, there's, I, I do take not a ton. A lot of people think I'm just out and about, but no, I do take breaks. And every once in a while, I, I plan a girl's trip. And every twice a year, Derek and I try to get away for some me time. And okay. we try to do that without talking about the kids. That is hard. That's hard that you do it without talking about the kids. But That's I have hard. to agree with you. It is important to do to get away and get that time alone and together, just the two of you. Yeah. Okay, well, let me ask you, your latest video addresses, um, oh no, wait, before I get to that one, tell me why you believe in prepping. How does that fit into your story? Um, well, I remember my parents doing food storage when I was a little kid. I remember seeing the barrels of wheat and just wondering, like, why do we have all this, you know, and, um, and then seeing these shelves go up and that's where my parents stored their food and, and seeing all the canned goods and wondering why do we do this? You know, but it became just second nature of this is our extended pantry. This is where we go to. Uh, and then we go to the store and it has benefited our family when times were tough. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned on a lot of my food storage videos that I didn't know that times were tough because of the way that my parents did it with food storage. We always had dinner. There was always food on the table and they would use the food storage when, you know, there was a lull in whatever it was that they were going on in their finances. Mm -hmm. So I learned to shop your pantry and then go to the store. So I grew up with that and we have seen the benefits of it, you know, in our marriage. Um, there was a time where money was tight, you know, especially when I became a full time homemaker and just having a couple of extra of something just helped out so, so much. So it taught me how to have my go to meals. And um, yeah, it really, really helps when there's this lull mm -hmm. and uh, you just don't know how you're going to do it sometimes and having that backup. But it was baby steps for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know I've been talking a lot about prepping on my channel. Mm -hmm. I try not to, cause I don't always want to talk about it, but sometimes I just feel like I'm called to do. Oh, that. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I really think we're seeing it right now with everything going on, having a yeah. little extra in your cabinets on your shelves is I think very wise right now. Well, not just wise, but it's certainly necessary of mm -hmm. just because of, of when you go to the store, there's just so many holes and gaps right now because of the supply chain dis yes. uh, distribution and the disruption, yep. and that kind of thing. So, so it really does make a lot of sense. And I yeah. know, um, you know, there were six of us when I grew up, six of us kids when I grew up, and Ooh. you know, we always had plenty of food on the table. Not sure how mom and dad managed to do it, but it was always there. Yep. And so I figured they must have sorted it out somehow. Yeah, I mean, I remember having spam sandwiches in my school lunch. And um, I grew up on that. I grew up on fluff and nutters, peanut butter and fluff. Mm -hmm. back east. But no, a lot of the times my school lunches were spam sandwiches. And my dad has made many creative meals from our food storage. And those I look back on with great fondness. And so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's a question from AC Jesse six. How do you balance sharing your life on YouTube with privacy? And also several people are saying they can't wait for the holiday content. Oh, good. Yay. I know oh, it's my favorite to do. I have a lot. My calendar, my post-it calendar and how I schedule everything is full. And so I'm actually starting filming that this weekend and all next week. Oh my gosh. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Okay. Um, so the question was privacy, right? How do I 
do that with my family and YouTube. Right. How do you balance sharing your life on YouTube with privacy? Yeah, I shared a lot in the beginning and I shared my children. And then I just noticed that it wasn't healthy for them or for me. And I didn't like the public scrutiny of my children, you know, mm -hmm. um, me fine. That's fine, but not my children. And so I realized I'm like, this is my journey. This is she's in her apron. It's not them. And so I scaled back. Um, and I'm so glad I did. You know, you'll see them walk by in the mm -hmm. videos now, but I don't necessarily always turn the camera to them anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, they need their privacy. That's important. They don't, they don't need to be on the internet like that. Um, but I do cherish the footage that I have and the videos that I have with them. We love going back and watching all that. So I try to just, I share like, but I, I, I'm definitely holding back. And I think a lot of people that have watched me from years before have noticed that. Um, and I, and it's sad, you know, a lot of people are, that have been with me for a while, they do want updates on the kids and things. And I'll give it, you know, once in a while, but I've just learned through this whole social media thing that, mm, and we might want to guard them a little yeah. and more. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, YouTube right now, I think the way the guidelines and all that runs, they would probably prefer you not have the right on there. So, yeah, I know it's, it's a fine line. It's hard because they are your heart and you're so proud of them and you want to share them. And they they've never minded you know they'll say i don't feel like being filmed today and then that's when i was like why i shouldn't mm, let's let's reel this in and so yeah there's a question here too from cassia reese and she wants to know are you having your kids do a mission i think a couple people oh asked. um if they want to callie you know she had a strong um, testimony of serving a mission she wanted to do that um and then when she before college, before she was graduating, she felt that, but then she also felt that that might not happen as well. So she really kept in prayer and, um, and that just didn't turn out. That didn't turn out for her. Um, but she spreads the gospel of being an example and just sharing about Christ other, other ways with family and friends. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Um, right now, Jonah, no, no, Boston. Yes. He does have a very strong desire. So we'll see, we encourage it, but we don't, force it. Um, if it's what they want to do, mm -hmm. they're fantastic. So yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, several people are, are, um, talking quite a bit to themselves. Uh, one of them was saying it's important that you share more because if you think you've shared more than you should, it's good. It's good I guess that, you know, you kind of know when to stop with that. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. I think that was it. You've got yarn prepper on and different things like that. I love seeing the comments. I'm reading them there. You guys are awesome. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Goodness. Okay. So there was one from Nicole Lee, which I don't see over here, but oh, there it is. Okay. Has your older daughter taken on the she's in her apron concept of food storage, cooking from scratch, et cetera? Some children like to stray. And this is the one that just got married. So, yes. Yes. Um, so, Callie has been learning to cook. Um, I gave her a cookbook last Christmas that I made for her and with all our family recipes. And if I made a video, I had a um, scan code for her for that. And her and Felix were so excited about it. So, she's been making things from it and, and she gets excited about it. Um, you know, it, it takes a while, I think, to get into that homemaking thing. It took me a while when we were mm -hmm. married. I was a horrible cook. <laughs> if Derek was here, he would tell you the the non-cooked chicken casserole that I did. It was bad. Yeah. So my daughter wasn't interested in learning how to cook until she got married. And then I get these phone calls, mom, how do you make this? Mom, yep. how do you make that? And I love getting those phone calls. And I know my mom yeah. probably still loves getting those phone calls from me and my sister. So, um, yeah, so she she's learning and, you know, um, and she loves it. But uh, she's she's focused on her work right now. It's cute. I love it. I love it when I get the phone calls or FaceTime. I'm making this and it's just cool. Oh. Yeah, I love it. So, OK, you're getting lots of love here. Chris. Um, lots of love. 
okay, let me just see. Where are we time-wise? Because I don't want to um, hold you too long and I don't want to make sure we stay on track. So let me ask you this then. Um, are you still selling the planner for the rest of the year? And uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. How much is it and where can we get it? Okay. So right now it's over at the in the leafy treetops.com, but it's on pause. What we did was we, I made an announcement like a week ago that we were going to sell a hundred more. And when those were done, it was done just because we are working with a family business. Um, mm -hmm. and nothing, nothing is made from like China. I didn't have to like get a full pallet of like a thousand planners or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they are literally made to order. And so we put a pause on the planner right now because we are making the 2022 planners. So, which will be launched in just a couple of weeks. So right now it's not available just so the factory can focus on our planners. So we're coming out with a few planners. So this is well, this is the, this is going to look different, but this is the yearly planner. Look at this. Look how chunky it is. Yeah. This is the, the last rendition I just got to, um, approve things and change things if I needed to. So, um, so this is the yearly and then we are still doing the term planners. We're still offering those. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I believe I haven't seen it yet, but we are doing an undated, uh, oh. term planner. Yes. But not undated yearly. We are going to offer an undated term planner, the form of planner. Okay. So when you say term planner, you mean, uh, I don't know what else to call it. Can you guys think of a name? I mean, like, cause it's not a quarterly planner cause quarter is three months. So, or, or we could just keep saying four month planner, but I like term planner. It makes sense. that I, I knew when you said term planner, I knew what you meant. I knew it was the four yeah. month one. I knew it wasn't the quarterly. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, it's time for me to do an apron note. So let me jump in and do that. But there's a note here from Faith and Flower from Robin. Oh, that says, thank you Robin. for the prepper videos. So oh, I appreciate that comment. And, um, and then someone, Cassie says she's mama to give. If you remember, she's here for the chat. So, okay. So it was nice to have someone from your community over here. All right. So it's time to give away an apron note. So for my people who are here, because they know that we give an apron note away on every show. And at Apron Diva, we put an apron note in with every order. And the purpose of the apron note is to remind each of you homemakers how special you really are. Because we know sometimes homemakers don't feel appreciated. So it is our hope that you will think of your apron note as a words of encouragement from your dearest friend. And we say, you don't choose the note. The note chooses you. And we have like 14 different notes. We put a different note in with each order and they're randomly assigned. There's my timer reminding me to, that it's time to do the apron note. <laughs> And um, so this week's note is this one. And it says, having a routine reduces the chaos. Mm -hmm. Having a routine reduces the chaos. Now, I'm sure that note is resonating with many of you out there. So type in the chat what that note means to you. And while they're typing in the chat, Kimmy, if you could tell me how that note is resonating with you. And also, Mickey Blue Skies just pulled the winner so one of you people in the chat will get the note and i'll reveal that name as soon as kimmy tells what it means to her all right so for me yes routines does cut the chaos and sometimes with my adhd and anxiety i feel like the routine has to be nailed perfectly mm -hmm. no, no, no no that's why i was like pop progress over perfection i tell myself all, every day just pop kimmy just pop you know, stride your routines. Like Kat has, Kat mentored me, Fly Lady Cat. She mentored me. me now. Oh, I, she's my angel. I, and she came into my life at the perfect time because uh -huh. she taught me this because I would stress so much that each thing on my routine wasn't being checked off and it just put more pressure on me. And it's not to just do, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, be happy or promote like not doing everything. But 
your routine is a guide to help guide you. So in the morning, you know, you have these things that can help guide to make your morning and afternoon easier in your night routine. There's there's those steps in there that will guide you to have your morning not be chaotic. And when I do those steps in the evening, I notice that the chaos is cut in half or, you know, and my anxiety is not so strong. And mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for those routines that I've learned um, because it not only does it cut the chaos in your home, but I honestly think like right here <laughs> and with the heart poundings and just, so I'm so thankful that, you know, I was taught that by Kat. And so, oh, she's here. I'm going to cry. Yes. I love you. She knows I love her. I love her. <laughs> As she says here, routines are the heart of homemaking. And I have to mm -hmm. agree. One of the things that I find is that the routines just kind of help you just automatically do it. Like yeah. right now she's got us all in boot camp. Yep. And, you know, it's just that you just kind of get to the point where you just do the routine. You just follow it. Just wrote. You just yeah. do it. And it becomes second nature. Like I was so glad that I followed my routine today. I had been really busy earlier. We got in a bunch of new products. And so I had to like photograph all of these new products. And I had photographed them last night for whatever reason. My camera wasn't set right and they were all ruined. So I had to photograph oh. them all again today. And so I got up early this morning, got my morning routine done, got all the products photographed, and I had to go for a hair appointment. But I made sure to put away everything before I left the house. I am so glad I did because when I came home, there was a car in the driveway. And I'm like, well, who's here? My brother, my two brother-in-laws were here from Georgia with their wives. And they were all at the table having lunch. My husband had made lunch for them. He had fried a bunch of fish that he had just caught yesterday. And then I had made this uh, beef pumpkin soup. He served that. And I was like, oh, my God, thank goodness I had my routines done. So the bathroom was done. I mean, everything was nice and neat when they came in. And one of the things I'll do when I'm at the beauty shop is I'll write the questions out for whoever I'm going to talk to that mm -hmm. night. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do that while I'm here today. I'm just going to chill. And I thought, no, you just better do that. I was so glad that I followed my routine because there was no time to do any of that. It's so true. It's, you know, it, it helps, you know, because the fly lady, she said chaos is can't have any one over syndrome. And it's so true. It's so true. Um, cause you could have no one over for the longest time and your house is spotless. And the one time it's not to where you would like it. There's always a knock at the door. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so the winner of the apron note is Rebecca Dowis. So Rebecca Dowis, you won the apron note. So what you'll need to do is send me your address by email. So, um, I'm going to uh, pop my email address. Send me your email address here at this and that with Denise at gmail.com. Don't put it in the chat. Send me it by email. And, um, and then I'll mail out your apron note. And then uh, we got a question from um, someone. It says, was Kimmy diagnosed with ADHD when she was younger or as an adult? And was there any one thing that made her wonder about whether or not she had ADHD? Oh, yeah, it was apparent that I had it. Um, well, it, it, I did get diagnosed as an adult. I finally needed, like, I needed that answer for myself. Mm -hmm. And so I did go and get that done. And yes, <laughs> yes, I do. And um, I did have it as a child. But back in the 80s, it was a different Um when I was in elementary school, it was different then. And so my mom never was able to get that diagnosis, but it was, it was clear. <laughs> well, not only that, but, you know, back in the eighties, they looked at things differently. And mm -hmm. I remember I was taking a course in grad school with a high school guidance counselor at the time. And she was probably about 10 or 15 years older than I was. And she was in, teaching in high school and I was teaching at the university nursing students. And uh, but we were talking about ADHD and behavior and all that kind of thing. And so the question came up as to whether or not people thought it was a real thing. And mm. she, she just thought it was just bad behavior, just kids using an excuse uh -huh. to get out of stuff. And I'm like, yeah. So you got those old school. I mean, like really old school, because I mean, I'm old school now. But you got like those really old school um, teachers who did not believe in the science behind 
some yeah. of the problems with students. And I remember my daughter talked once about one of her cousins who always struggled with some behavioral issues and acting out and things like that. And he would get like spankings for acting out or for not doing this or that or the other. And she said, you know, I think he probably had ADHD because now we're more aware. Yeah. So, yeah, I struggled hard as a kid with studies with, um, I think every kid has trouble with like keeping their room clean, but I saw things differently and, mm -hmm. and then I would hyper focus in one area. And so sometimes I would be up at night. I was always a night owl and there'd mm -hmm. be times where I'd be up at night and I was like getting the room spotless. And then, then it just unraveled after that. So it's like a yo-yo. And so as an adult, um, I was having my daughter tested for ADHD and I decided to get tested and yep. Okay. <laughs> Loud but and proud. It was there. You were a student enough to recognize that, you know what, she's yeah. having some symptoms similar to what I was and maybe there's something going on here yeah. that we need, that we need to just kind of clue into. Yep. Okay. Going to get back to, um, uh, homekeeping and I've got a question for you and let's say for your nice young daughter who is a new homemaker, I need advice on how to do all the things. New bride, new homemaker, what are your top five homekeeping tips? Okay, so man, I wish YouTube was around when I was married, <laughs> first married. Man, that would have been something. Um, definitely routines that number one, get yourself on a routine. I didn't start doing that until my third child. So 2007, uh, that's when I learned of the fly lady, like around there, um, after I had him. And so I think it was him or Shaylee, that everything's a blur, but after one of my babies, I learned about fly lady. I learned about routines. So start setting up a routine now, um, before, kids and family and um, come into the picture. I, I tell Callie this all the time, set up a routine. It'll set you up for success. It'll help with anxiety. Um, it, it, it's the cornerstone, I really feel like, of homemaking. So just pick three things that you would like to do in the morning and three things that you'd like to do at night um, if, you know, if having too much is overwhelming. So, um, and then try to hit those. And so having a routine, number one, and then, um, I, I wrote these down. I have to unplug my phone. So routine. And then the next one was, um, my top five. Oh yeah. Having a planner or writing it down in some way. So pick yourself up a planner. It could be a dollar store planner. It could be whatever the she's in her apron planner coming out soon or whatever, write it down. Um, write a plan. I used to do in the beginning of our marriage, a calendar up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And so I would use that um, to see things because I'm a visual learner. I have to see it. Phones, I've tried doing things in my phones, but paper for me um, works better writing it and seeing it. So I hung a calendar on the wall and had everything there. Sometimes I would color coordinate it so my eyes could see it. So having a planner or a calendar of some sort. Um, and then um, there was meal planning is the third one. But with meal planning, it's knowing what your go-to meals are. Now, oh, if you go to so meals. your go-to meals and that will fall into meal planning. So that's number three, and number four. So where did you'll notice you'll get into a flow. What are your go-to meals together? You know, what are things that you're liking and you seem to gravitate to? Those are your go-to. You want a go-to. And then you can, you know. I'm going to try this recipe because you're going to want to, right? So exciting to learn to cook and whatever. And so, um, but I would say have your top recipes that you could always go to. And with that, you're going to be able to shop your shelves and start having those things on hand. So when it's like, oh, shoot, what's for dinner? Well, okay, we have these basic things that we always have on hand. We can easily throw together the shepherd's pie, the, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So, oh, and yeah. number five was, and it's gone. I del accidentally deleted it. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> well, I just well, I remember right. number five was uh, to to go with the flow. And what I mean by this is, 
is we could get so structured in our routines and our to do's and, and things that I realize that I have to go also with how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So for example, with following the fly lady system, she has her weeks set up in zones, right? Mm -hmm. So zone one slash five is your porch, right? And, um, so on two, the first, way, dining room. Yeah, the first full week of the month is the kitchen. Well, I'm sorry, but with how I function and my brain functions, if week two is coming around and I'm not feeling the kitchen and I'm not motivated to do it, I will move that to when I am. I'll move that week and pick something else. And I will do, I know I'm feeling my closet. I can't even walk in my closet. My closet needs to get done. That needs to, for anything. If I'm feeling that pull towards my closet, that's what I'm going to. Okay. So still do your zones, but I go also with how I feel. And so that's why with my planner, when I have, I set up the zones in there, mm -hmm. I don't give it a week like the fly lady does, because that might not be where I want, I feel pulled to go. So I have it just listed so i could pick something from like zone four the bedrooms i could do the closet or let's say for a good example um okay so let's go to zone two the kitchen right okay mm -hmm. let's say i am feeling it but it's all overwhelming and you're like okay fine there's like a gazillion things i could do in my kitchen and then it's overwhelming and then it's like forget it i'm not going to do it so you could pull just i'm going to work on just the appliances this week or I'm going to pull one from the appliances, one from the kitchen, like maybe wiping the walls, something mm -hmm. simple. And I'll pull something from my cupboards. I'm just going to tidy up this one drawer and something in the dining room. I'm going to just um, maybe just do the baseboards in there. So I set it up this way because I do need to go with the flow and how I'm feeling sometimes. The, pro the point of all of this is, you know, where are you popping in your home? Where do you want to make progress? If you're doing something in your home, fantastic. Yeah. So be proud of whatever it is. If you just did one thing, be, be so proud of it. Because I used to beat myself up a lot for a long time. Even ask Kat. She will mm -hmm. tell you. And I learned that it takes a lot if you are working outside the home and you come home, you're exhausted, right? Mm -hmm. And then you think of everything that you have to do and it gets overwhelming. I think we make our to-do lists way too big. Way too long. Way too long. Too big. What are your top three things for the week? And then maybe what are your top three things for the day? And look at it that way because it can get very, very overwhelming. Um, I, um, And it was so nice to finally have Kat show me that because I used to compare myself a lot to a lot of people, which we all do. Right. Yeah. But I compared myself a lot to my amazing mother-in-law who, um, can nail a clean home. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I have my amazing husband who was raised by a mom who is You're probably born organized. Like, and then he marries this <laughs> ADHD lady, you know, and so I used to compare myself to her best mm -hmm. and that wasn't healthy. So when I learned to not do that and just focus on my best and be proud of it, routines, things flowed and yeah, I'm much happier. I, I was, I was too, too, too hard on myself for a long time with that. The other thing that stood out to me from that was you're comparing yourself to your mother-in-law's mm -hmm. best. So one of the things I try to tell my young homemakers is don't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. Oh, your yeah. mother-in-law was at her middle or towards, you know, more towards the end. Yeah. You were at the beginning. You mm -hmm. can't be expected to know yeah. all the things like your Callie. You're not expecting her to know how to keep a house like you do. And she's just beginning homemaking. Yeah. She's at the beginning and now you're in the middle. Yep. So she's going to be learning from you. So, yeah. So, yeah, I really like the way you set the planner up and I was reaching, trying to reach for mine. I thought I had it right here and I knocked over a radio. So I'll have to <laughs> that out later. But let's talk about the planner. Let's talk mm -hmm. about how you had it set up and why you set it up the way you did instead of just like buying a planner that was already you know, put together. Tell us how yours is unique. Why should we buy yours? How is it different? 
And I just want to say that I love it. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm really happy with the response that it's getting because that I was nervous to finally, you know, launch I love it. that is yours, you know? Um, so what I did was the first thing that I created for it was my weekly spread and then mm-hmm. everything else. So I needed something where I could see, um, where I could go my mm-hmm. to do's cause I have ADHD. I need mm-hmm. to know where we need to leave the house and all that. So that's how I created it. And then because I do a morning and night routine, I decided, oh, I'm going to put that in there. Now, if someone doesn't do a morning and night routine, they could easily cover that with a sticker and they have a seven, seven things, uh, so that they could track each week. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I, I set it up that this way first, I needed this, this was okay. So I wanted something that, um, can have it all in one glance and not turn so many pages. So my whole week is here. Mm -hmm. And then I created the aprons on pad for something that I, if I have a really busy day, I I could put that on the fridge, you know, and I tend to go toward more the pad method Mm -hmm. when, um, and it's the summer because it's not so structured in the summer. So I have a pad. I don't think I have one in here. Um, that says aprons on, and it has things for that day, like to-do list. And then, um, oh, there you go. Yes. Yeah, you got the you got the spell correction one. <laughs> the the non-correction the one. I yeah, I got the one that's correct. Oh, we, we noticed that much later. But yeah, so I love that because it has where you're going for the day and just your meal plan. Simple for the eyes to see. Mm-hmm. Um, so what it stands out differently is that it actually has enough of what you need and not too much of that can over overdo it and kind of make you go um i don't know how to fill this planner so i'm not going to fill the planner do you know what i mean yeah. so i kept it very simple for the brain and also in here it has dual calendars so you have your normal you know month at a glance here that you know traditional mm-hmm. calendar But we all have different things that we're doing in our life. We have our jobs. um, And so you could schedule all that out on the four-week dual calendar. So you could do your kids' schedules here. You can map out your social media content. Mm -hmm. Your teacher, you can map out on here. Um, If you want to map out your workouts, you could do that here. It's separate from the traditional, I guess, family calendar type thing. So... Um, and then the new, I'm going to give you a sneak peek, Denise. I want to see it. You're seeing it here first with Denise Jordan. Okay. We added a budget page. Oh. So it was highly requested by a lot of you that you wanted the budget page. Mm-hmm. Now, because I I made the planner for me and then, then I looked at it like, okay, wh- how would everyone else like it too? And I budget outside my planner, but... I decided let's put it in. So we we got a budget to spread for you. And one thing that makes it different than everybody else's is the shop your shelves page. Mm-hmm. Where's my camera? I so got this right here. Um, so you have shop your shelves. So you have freezer inventory, fridge inventory, pantry inventory, and freezer meals. So what this is, is you don't have to write everything that you have in these categories. It's what do I want to use up this month? So we don't, we could try to stop wasting what we have. Mm-hmm. So it's just a re- friendly reminder. These are the things on my shelves and in my fridge and freezer that I would like to use up this month. And then from there, you can create your menu plan and just jot down ideas all down here for you. And then you could pull from those if you want, and then put it in your weekly spread right here for your menu plan. Mm-hmm. So, yep. So, that and really then that's works it. out nicely. Yeah. And then that's it. There's little notebook pages at the end and a four block grid at the end of every month that you could use it for goals. You could use it for your holiday planning, um, things like that. Now, I'm going to give another ex- exclusive peek right here with Denise Jordan. Okay, I'm you see I'm leaning in. I'm like, okay, I'm leaning in. Give me more, give me more. All right, friends. There are holiday pages in the 2022 planner. Oh, great. Yes. But I did it differently. I did not add like let's say for Christmas, like 
stocking stuffers and all like neighbor gifts. I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I left it to, um, let me take all these tabs out. I was just making the font. I had tabs in here to make the font darker for you guys. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So for instance, we're on Thanksgiving. I have Thanksgiving pulled up here. So this side is ready, set, party, all the things to do from the weeks leading up to Thanksgiving. And I teach, I've taught these over the years on my channel and you have it here to help guide you. And then a to-do list here that you could check off. There's check boxes. Oh, love it. Okay. And post it, post it. This is your Thanksgiving dinner. You can keep track of all that. Giving you guys sneak peeks. I hope you're excited. I am. That oh is God. really cool. I oh, really and there's like grocery that. lists for it. So it's more on the meal planning of the holidays for you and your holiday mm -hmm. dinner. So, um, but there's, there's a lot, there's a cooking schedule and assignments of who's got what, and you can track it. So, oh, it is so practical. Yeah. So, and then, um, a cooking schedule. So a cooking schedule, if you want, if you follow a cooking schedule, like for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what Easter looks like. That's what Christmas looks like, but colorful for each holiday. Mm -hmm. And, um, but there is the four page note grid in each section. So if you wanted to break it up for Christmas gifts and stocking stuffers and things like that, you can, I just want a streamlined planner that doesn't overwhelm too much. And that just, um, keeps you focused and in, in the planner, um, because we can, we get distracted so easily. So, yeah. Um, Kat says that Kimmy's planner is the most satisfying planner I personally have used. And I have to say, I have really enjoyed using it. You know, Mickey Blue Skies and I, we are inkwell press baby. Oh. I've been using it for about the last five years and I really enjoy it. But I, I used yours for the whole month of September, just every day for the month of September. So when October came around, I found myself reaching for it to use again for this month as well, because I really wanted to talk about how well it has worked. And it has really worked out well for me just to be able to sit down and put in the different routines or add in the different routines. And I got some good stuff out of yours, too, because one of the things you had talked about in your routines was wanting to prayer on your knees. And I thought, hmm, she's talking about prayer on her knees. I just need to add prayer. You I know. know. Regardless I know. of how I get it done, you know. So I was putting that in for the yes. routines and stuff. And like yeah. most moms and even moms were or homemakers when it's just he and I here, I still put myself last. So I don't often get yes. some of the self-care things that I need to do for me. Yes. And so I put those things on like the morning and the evening routines mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing too. So Yep. And it's nice because I, I do get comments of like, well, are we supposed to write our routines every week in the planner? I'm like, you could. Uh, there's things that I do robotically that I don't need to write in the planner, you know. Mm -hmm. But when I want something and I'm trying to do something different and new, like the vanity, I've been the last month putting the vanity um, you're on my vanity right now. <laughs> so like clearing off that when I'm done getting ready mm -hmm. and, you know, and wiping it down, like you do the bathroom, you know, you wipe it down when you're done. I need to wipe down my vanity when I'm done. Yeah. So I put that in. And if it's a week that you are, let's say you're going on vacation, we're going to St. George in, in a little while um, down in Southern Utah. So I still have routines. Like I'm still going to pray, pray. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, maybe I can add something for my morning routine while on vacation that I can put in there and, and to work on. So it's just, it's, you could use it in so many ways for your routines. And, and that's what I love about it. Now, the question from, um, Tam, I love my babies forever. It says, which planner is this? Cause I've talked about several. So show yours again. Okay. So um, it has a different can... look. It has a different cover, but this is what, what last year's cover looks like. This is just the final proof of the um, planner. And so he just put this cover on because all our covers are being laminated right now. It has a total new look and logo on the front. You guys are going to love it. it. Actually says um, she's in her apron planner and it's adorable. So I, I thought of sharing a sneak peek, but I thought, no. I'm going to wait so you guys can see it in just a couple of weeks. It'll okay. be launched on our new website that um, is being built right at the moment. And in fact, when I jump off of this, I got to go look and approve some things. I'm so excited. So um, it'll be launched 
on our website and not in the leafy treetops. Um, so, but yeah. It's so exciting. Okay. So give it a couple of weeks, ladies, and then you can order either the yearly or um, it in the four month. And so it's exciting. And you're going to love the new covers for next year. You have 13 choices. Wow. Yes. I know. 13, choices. 13. The warehouse was like, you could do 13. I'm like, they will love you. So there's a design for everybody trending okay. floral. I mean, there's so many, there's so many. So I'm excited to share them with you. So it has a new look and it's exciting. And we are, if I can pull it off, we're working on um, a planner to launch with it and we'll see if I like the layout of it. But yeah, there's many choices for this planner because every brain is different. Everyone looks at things differently. Yeah. So um, my planner could be the right fit for you and it could not be the right fit for you. So and that's just how planners okay. are. So right. Tam, Tammy, um, this is Kimmy from She's in Her Apron. And she's talking about her new planner called the She's in Her Apron Planner. And it's going to be launching in about two weeks. And yes. here you can see where you can get it. Yes. So um, the website's not up yet. So if you go to it, you won't be able to find it. So give it two weeks or less than two weeks. They're really working hard on the website. The website will be up. Um, it's launching with the planner. So that's exciting. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. So it's time for the lightning round. Okay. Yes, it's time for the lightning round. So question number one, spring or fall? Fall. Halloween or 4th of July? Oh, Derek's birthday is on 4th of July, but Halloween. Okay. <laughs> All right. Easy freezer, slow cooker cookbook or sheet pan suppers? Uh, slow cooker. Thrive Market or Augustin Farms? Ooh, oh, Denise, that wasn't a nice one. That's <laughs> hard. Well, oh, dang. All right. Both because Thrive, I can have delivered to my home on rotation and not even thinking about it. I could pick things and put it in my cart and have it sent to me. And um, I, I always say them wrong. Augustin, Agustin. Oh my gosh. I, uh, I love that. I can find them in the stores too. Yeah. I saw oh. some of their stuff at Walmart. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. You can find them on Walmart. So that's a tough one. That's a, that was a tricky question. Okay. Yep. That was a hard one. Well, salsa mushroom chicken or slow cooker pumpkin oatmeal. Oh, slow cooker pumpkin oatmeal. Costco's or Trader Joe? Costco. Morning routine or after dinner cleanup? Ugh. That night routine, man, that is hard. So morning routine. <laughs> okay. And bib or waste? Bib. Yeah, I like bib aprons too. I like the waste ones, you know, but it depends on what I'm doing or I like them to come up pretty high. Yeah, I think a bib if for me for cleaning because then, you know, you've got the pockets and everything, but I am... I'm worse than my kids. I get things on my shirts. I'm bib. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Kimmy, I want to thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, tonight. I you. really appreciate it. And um, let's see what kind of wrap up comments we've had. Cause it's time for me to let you go. So, Oh, mind your manner said bib. Yeah. And someone else said pumpkin oatmeal. So good. And, uh, oh, Nicole Lee says, uh, women entrepreneurs, I love you, ladies. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank I you love all you ladies. I love reading all your comments. I've been reading as it's been going. You guys are awesome. Thank oh, you. Oh, I've got a great community over here. I you mean, really do. Community. They're really cool. Oh, my everyday wife life. Hello. It's so great seeing familiar faces and new faces. So this is exciting. So you guys will have to go over and um, get to know Kimmy on her YouTube channel. Now, Kimmy, how can they um, connect with you later? Like, do you have a Patreon or membership? Not yet. Like We've that? been thinking about Patreon. Um, we have some ideas for the new year. We're going to see if we're going to do Patreon or just something over on the website. But they can connect with me on YouTube. I, I check my comments. It's me. So I answer and, and see everyone's comments. Um, I have things on Facebook, but honestly, if you want to connect with me or talk with me, DM me on Instagram. 
Okay. And yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, Kimmy, um, do you have any final words? Um, um, anything we missed? No, I just, I'm just so thankful for all of you. And honestly, I don't try not to have homemaking be so overwhelming because it's your home. It's mm -hmm. your rules, you know, and do, do what you can and be proud of that. You know, I say pop, um, because I need that daily reminder every day. Um, you know, you're, you're making things pop in your home every day and be proud of the big successes and the small successes and, um, enjoy the journey because I'll tell you, time has gone by since I started She's in Her Apron in mm -hmm. 2012. And I think of all that time that's gone by and I've enjoyed the journey, but, um, I wish I could have breathed it in a little more. So mm -hmm. enjoy the journey and the process and mm -hmm. love your home. There's yeah. don't Living worry about being perfect. And, enjoy it. Love yes. your home. and your home will love you back. So yes. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to um, boot you off and put you back in the waiting room. If you need to oh. jump off, go ahead or otherwise, um, or, or if you want to sit while I wrap it up, you're welcome to do that. But I know, um, um, so I'll give you that option, but I'll, um, go ahead and remove you and then I'll come back and talk to you okay. for a hot second if you're still there. And if not, yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Thank you everybody. Well, you leave you on. You can say goodbye. Oh, you can hide me or keep me here. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, just just thank you everybody. <laughs> okay. All right then. Well then, uh, one of the things that I want to let everybody know is that next week we're going to have uh, Cassie Joy Garcia on and next week. And she is the one that wrote her newest book is this one. And it is Cook Once, Dinner Fix. And it is amazing. I got an advanced copy and I've been making some stuff out of it. And me and Leona Dooley from Ebony, Ivy and Time are going to make something next week. And I think we're going to upload it on Wednesday so that we've got it to talk about when she's on on Thursday. And if you're not familiar with that one, she also wrote this one, Cook Once, Eat All Week. Most people are familiar with that one. And so they're both pretty good. I first learned about it from Robinette Faith and Flower and loved it. And so then I got one from the library and tried it and loved it. So um, so there's that. And then um, so my question for all of you is what is your takeaway from um, Kimmy's um, discussion today? What is your takeaway from either her top five tips her just discussion about being a homemaker and loving your home and it'll love you back. Just what's your takeaway? Tell me in the comment section. And for those of you who are on the replay, tell me in the comment section as well. We want to know what your takeaway was from this inspiring homemaker. We really want to know that. The other question is, who would you like for me to bring on? I'm still working on I've got a spot open in December, but I'm working on first quarter of next year. So you guys let me know who you want me to bring on. And I've already reached out to a couple of people that you've mentioned. So let me know. And if you missed last week's show with Kate from the Organized Soprano, oh my goodness, she was amazing. So be sure and catch the replay because she was really good. She had a lot of good ideas. She had talked about refrigerator organization. It was like, who knew? There's a science behind it. <laughs> so she was on, she was really good. And then don't forget to check out our sponsor, Apron Diva, at uh, www.aprondiva.com. Oh, and I forgot to mention that, you know, here's the apron that's the featured one. Again, it's the mom and me. So you can see the, the one for the mom and then the one for the little girl hanging on the door. And then the one that has the little truck on the front that everybody was asking about is back in stock. We got some men. Oh. So. It is so cute. So they're back in stock. But I only, you know, so if you're interested, you better check it out because you guys, you know, things go quickly. <laughs> yeah, things go quickly. And so Tam says her takeaway is do what you can and try to plan what you can. So and give yourself grace. And I think that was something huge when you said that, Kimmy, is to give yourself grace. So often we are so hard on ourselves. We don't give ourselves enough grace. So there's that. And, oh, my sister, Levina Taylor, jumped on. She said, hey, good night. Stay blessed. And 
Ronnie Weaver says that she needs to keep telling herself to give yourself grace as she tackles this and that. And somebody's talking about the truck. <laughs> For some reason that truck has been trending and people are liking it. So, so yeah. And then um, let's see, is there another takeaway? Oh, another takeaway, chill and be you work hard, but not so hard to soak in the moments Plan, prep, and pray. Yes, plan, prep, and pray. And enjoy the moments. You know, enjoy the ride. You know, enjoy life because life is short. So enjoy it. All right. So I think I have covered. I think, I, I think that's it. <laughs> this was so fun, Denise. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad fun. it was. <laughs> You know, I'm still learning too. Like I'm, I'm trying to learn to be a better interviewer and not to like jump in too much. And then sometimes I'm learning, okay, this person, just let them go and just let them chat. And then um, like when Mary was on, me and Mary, when we get Mary from Mary's Nest, mm -hmm. we're like almost best friends. We get to talk and we go nonstop. Just blah, 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 and we can't <laughs> stop. So sometimes I would interrupt her so that I could like get on to the next point. And then I would be getting a little, like a note from Mickey Blue Skies, quit cutting her off, quit cutting her off, you know? <laughs> but I'm like, she and I, we'll never stop talking. I mean, we're just like that. We get on the phone, we're on the phone for an hour. Oh, I love that. Yeah, if we lived, like she's in Texas and I'm in Indiana, but if we were closer together, we'd be like at each other's house all the time. So I'm trying to learn to be a better interviewer, a better host. And uh, so I enjoy it when I've got good guests on who can kind of just kind of carry things along on their own, too. So thank you. I appreciate your being here. Oh, I love this. This was great. OK, so let's see. I think. Um, I think that's it. Right. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Be sure and jump back next week when we have Cassie Joy Garcia on. And she's having a baby in a month. So it's like we had to get her on quick because she's like, I'm having a baby next month. I'm like, we better get you on soon because she's going to be busy. Yeah. So I will see you guys next time. Good night. Bye.